for the Lord. Be strong. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear friend, good morning and welcome to our Tuesday devotion, the 31st day of March in the year of our Lord and Savior 2020. This day, it is the last in this month. We thank God for the month that has come to an end. And we claim a productive month starting tomorrow. Whatever it is that we are, in terms of the month that is passing, we still thank God. We are still in the lockdown, but we thank God. In all ways, we thank God. Let us pray. Grant us, we pray, O Lord, perseverance in obeying your will, that in our days, the people dedicated to your service may grow in both merit and number through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. My dear friend, allow me now to share with you the gospel of the day. When you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. We are reading from the Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, verses 21 to 30. At that time, Jesus said to the Pharisees, I go away, and you will seek me and die in your sin. Where I am going, you cannot come. Then said the Jews, Will he kill himself, since he says, Where I am going, you cannot come? He said to them, You are from below, I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. For you will die in your sins unless you believe that I am he. They said to him, Who are you? Jesus said to them, Even what I have told you, from the beginning, I have much to say about you, and much to judge, but he who sent me is true, and I declare to the world what I have heard from him. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am He, and that I do nothing on my own authority, but speak thus as the Father taught me. And He who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone. For I always do what is pleasing to him. As he spoke thus, many believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Today, my dear friend, we reflect on Jesus Christ as the Father's ambassador. And there's, there's a lesson today that I want us to take home. And the lesson is, it is not about me. It is about him who sent me. Many a times we live in this Christian life with a lot of self-centeredness and vain glory. It's not about me. It's about the one who gave me the Christian calling. And to be Christ ambassador then it must be seen in others. A story is told 
of an old man who had two sons. So one day, the sons came to their father and told their father that, Father, we want to get married. And the father said, By the look of things, I can only help one of you. So, I'll send you to an errand. I want you to go. I want you to go to a certain village. Once you have gone and you have come back, I want you to take me to where you were. As you go, please leave marks so that you'll be able to know your path to take me. And then we are back. When we get back and we know who has left the best marks, that one I'll help to get a wife. And therefore, the two sons were ready and they were released to go. And they took different paths to go to a certain village where the, the girl would be taken from. And now, when they went, the first son went cutting trees to mark as where he was going. He would cut all the trees, making sure that it, it looks like um, actually a path, if not a road, if you like. Then he went to the village and was able to come back through the same path that he had cut the trees. The other son, in a, as he was going, in every household he met, he entered, made friendships, and would give them some small food. Something he'd over to eat. And he continued like that. And he was fed through and through. He went to the same village and came back. Now it was the turn for the father, the father to go with the two sons, each on his own turn, to take me where you were. He took the first son. The first son is the one who went clearing the bushes, the trees cutting so that he can be able to know where he passed through. And then went and came back. Then he took the path of the second son. And before they were, they were long, before long, they came to a household where he was received very well and given some porridge and some food stuff. He continued and the trade continued like that. In every household he went, he was received very well because the second son had left the mark of friendship. Went to the village and came back. When he came, he told them, see me tomorrow morning. So the two sons came the following morning. And he told them, I have seen the mark that you left. For the first son, the father said, I am disappointed. You don't go breaking other people to be able to, to leave a mark in your life. You don't go spoiling life. And then he was told, you have failed me. And for the second son, thank you. Thank you for investing your friendship in others. It is you who will get a wife. You know, when I reflect on this story and the work of Anabazida, Anabazida is somebody who goes leaving a mark. And of course, showing the best of the country that has sent them. It is not about them. Anabazida represents something greater than them. Today, we are being called on the same. It is not about us. It is about Christ who have sent us. Let me ask you, those of you who have worked in very many stations, can you go back to all those stations and be proud that I worked here 20 years ago? And be proud that I worked here 15 years ago? And be proud that I was here 40 years ago? And be proud that I was here 50 years ago? Can you? What mark are you leaving as you move on with life? Remember, when we realize that it is not about us, it is about God, then we now turn our attention to others. We become helpers. We become benevolent. We become 
we become hospitable. We become humane. That is my point. And therefore today, as you step out, and as you say goodbye to the month of March, look back and ask, if I was told to go back to the 1st of March, what mark have I left in that month? I worked somewhere in 15 years ago. What mark did I leave? 20 years ago, 30, 40, 50. How proud am I? The moment we will know that we are ambassadors of God with Christ, then we will know what it means to actually invest in others. Now, finally, let us reflect on these words from Sheldon Van Oken in his book, Severe Mercy. His book is called Severe Mercy. Buy that book. Eh? He says, and I quote, The best argument for Christianity is Christians. Their joy, their certainty, their completeness. But the strongest argument against Christianity is also Christians. When they are self-righteous and smug in complacent consecration, when they are narrow and repressive, then Christianity dies a thousand deaths. End of the quote. That is powerful. Where are we standing? I'm sure that today we will make a decision to be the strong men, the strong women. Let us do it, not for ourselves. Let us do it for God. No wonder I keep on saying, all for the greater glory of God. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that ever seeking what is divine, we may always be worthy to approach these heavenly gifts. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who chose to show mercy, not anger, to those who hope in you, grant that your faithful may weep as they should for the evil they have done, and so merit the grace of your consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. My dear friend, thank you. May it be well with you. And as we say goodbye to the month of March, let us look back and say thank you to God. Enjoy this day. Mm -hmm.